Let's say you have voluntarily signed up to be with your family in the middle of nowhere at a cottage by a lake. It's all fun and games until you have a rain day to deal with. So what to do? Board games, of course, but everyone's tired of Risk and Monopoly and Clue. So in this video, I will give you a list of games you might not have thought of that are perfect for that situation here on Legendary Tactics. Rain days are always a risk with young kids, especially if you are away somewhere. But whether it's rainy, snowy, or even just after dark, board games will be the perfect way to spend the time together. To get you out of the rut of playing the same old titles, here are 10 games, in no particular order, that you might not have thought of that could be perfect in that situation. Descent Journeys in the Dark is the first one I'll list here. This game is a lot of fun and is perfectly adaptable to the age of the kids and the desired complexity level. Obviously the game has a campaign game if you have that much time, but why I like having this game around is that you can tell any number of stories using its components. The board pieces are modular and can be fitted together in numerous ways, and there's a broad range of different heroes and villains to populate the world you are creating for your family. It can be both a great tool for role-playing games and a great introduction to it. Stella Dixit Universe is a game that, as the title suggests, is part of the Dixit Universe. Players are given a common clue word, take a look at some cards with some strange, surrealistic images, and assign some of those cards to the clue word with erasable slates. You score points by selecting the same cards as other players. It's a neat game, an evolution on the design of Dixit that gives it more structure and some interesting mechanics that, I think, improve on the concept. Sometimes you just need a quick, fun, and easy game to fill the time. Mancala fits that bill. Players sew stones onto the board, which is just made up of 12 hollow pits, six to a side. Even little kids grasp the concepts behind this game easily, but there's enough strategy there to hold an adult's attention, and it plays pretty quickly, meaning that you can zip through a game or two or even have a multiplayer tournament without difficulty. And talk about a classic that has stood the test of time, this game is estimated to be about 8,000 years old. Dungeon Mayhem is such a fun game, possibly the most loved in our household. This card game pits players against each other as different fantastical characters, such as dragons and trolls, as well as blobs of gel and live furniture. Players essentially take turns playing damage and shield cards along with their special abilities in their effort to be the last man, woman, or creature standing. It's a game that's quick for even young kids to pick up, and games only last about five minutes or so between experienced players. The only downside is that there is a lot of attacking each other's characters, so there has to be an emotional understanding of that by all involved, and a sense of, oh well, I lost, let's fire up another one. Blockus is another quick playing game that is a lot of fun, and it likely simultaneously grows one's cognitive abilities in some way that I have not yet fully determined. Players place shapes connected at the corners in an attempt to fill up as much of the board as possible. When no one has any places left to go, the number of squares in each leftover piece are added up, and the player with the lowest score is the winner. Blockus in all of its versions is fun, and it's a good thinky challenge mixed with a nice aesthetic and a clever and streamlined design. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is great for those who love mysteries and detective stories, but really can be enjoyed by anyone. Any number of players can play as the game consists only of case booklets, a map, newspapers, and some directories. There's a great storytelling element to this game, although there is a lot of reading involved. But all the discussion and reasoning about not only the case, but where to go and who to talk to next, leads to what can be, with the right group, an incredibly immersive experience. One downside to this game is that, if the discussions are prolonged, the game can take a while. Also, extroverts in the group will need to make sure that meeker players can have some say in the decision making, as a strong personality can potentially dominate things and make it unpleasant for others but overall a unique concept and an amazing game. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battles is a fun one for all those Harry Potter fans out there. This is a cooperative game where players build their decks and work together to make their way through each of the books, defeating the bad guys along the way. Thematically, this game is a home run, and any activity that helps families to work together and have fun at the same time is worth a look, in my opinion. Sleeping Queens is a favorite of my daughter's, but surprisingly I found my son enjoys playing it as well. It's a simple game where players play cards from their hand that allow them to wake up one of the face down sleeping queens on the table, steal a queen, put one back to sleep face down, 
or to prevent those last two things from happening. Alternatively, they can play cards that add up to another one, like 2 plus 3 equals 5, in order to increase their card draw for the turn. It's easily taught and easily learned, and it provides some exciting and fun moments in a short playtime. The downsides are that it is quite luck-based, and there is some potentially negative interaction, like stealing another player's queen, or putting another player's queen back to sleep on the table, which might not go well with some families. Forbidden Island, Forbidden Desert, Forbidden Skies offer what is essentially a lighter version of the game Pandemic, which makes sense as it has the same designer involved. Each game is different but similar in that players are trying to collect cards and get to locations where they can get items that will allow them to win the game. They are fun games for kids and because they're cooperative they can work well with most family situations. I like all of them, but if I have to rank them, I think Forbidden Island would have to be at the top, followed by Forbidden Desert, and then Forbidden Skies. But they are all close in quality and offer a unique challenge. Just choose the one with the theme that most interests everyone. Beer and Bread is a two-player game and is definitely for older children. The game isn't tremendously complex and it offers a really interesting resource management experience. In this game, players are, unsurprisingly, making beer and bread out of the various ingredients that are drawn from fields on the board. The cards in the game can be used in multiple ways, either to harvest ingredients, to make beer or bread, or for the special abilities that are found at the bottom of the card. The game is fun, and once you are familiar with the cards, it doesn't take very long to play. It is a fun, puzzly challenge, and it really doesn't have any negative interactions at all other than the competition to see who can score more points. So if you are rained out of your activities for the day and want to spend time with family without involving any type of screen, I think these games are all excellent choices. Thank you so much for watching. This is Legendary Tactics.